Ultra. Goes huge for Ultra, and they get their first home series victory. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another episode of CA Ultra. I'm one of your hosts, Spencer, and with me is Chris. And we have some exciting news to talk about in terms of the Toronto Ultra. So, Chris, let's just jump right into this. But before we do, how's it going? It's going great. I mean, we got on the board, so I'm happy about that. But before we break it down, guys, if you like our content, if you like, you know, chiming in with us once a week and listening about Toronto Ultra and general Call of Duty stuff, you know, please don't forget to like and subscribe to uh, C Ultra. It really helps. And push our algorithm, push our videos out to other fans just like you guys. Yeah, we really appreciate all the support. And, like, let us know what you think because even though Toronto did get a win, I don't know if it was the win some people were hoping for. I don't know if it was the win that I was hoping for, but it was a win nevertheless. So let's just do a quick little uh, recap of that previous game. Not too much to talk about, and then we can kind of get into, like, how important this upcoming week is because it's very important. If you're an Ultra fan or just the Toronto Ultra in general – these next two matches are extremely important, both in terms of the major standings, in terms of whether or not you get the winner brackets, but also in terms of whether or not I think this team should go out there and make a change. Um, but before we get into that stuff, let's just talk about this game versus the LA Gorillas. Chris, what are some of the things that just, you know, quickly really stood out to you? Yeah, well, because, um, you know, Insight's still a shiny penny on our team. Yeah, I definitely want to focus on him a little more. I think he's taking a lot of initiative to make plays. Uh, especially during, you know, the SND, uh, even though, you know, on the first SND we lost, but he's still out there, you know, going and trying to make plays. And I, I really like the initiative he took uh, to help aid the team. And I, I know it's interesting to say, but, you know, I, I really like the fact that we did redeem ourselves in the final uh, SND by winning, like, what was it, 6 0? 6 0. 6 0, yeah. 6-0 um coming back from a pretty tough loss in the first one so it's good to see i mean control it's still our weakness which is it's super unfortunate again. uh but uh, it's good to see we we had, did decently on the hard points and at least like came back in that mm-hmm. indeed yeah, I think, again, just kind of shows the inconsistencies of this team. When they're on, they're on, right? When they're on, they're one of the best, I want to say one of the best teams in the league, but they're, when they're on, they're like a top six team, right? Like, they look like they have the, the makings of a top yeah. 16. You can see that where they go in such a destroy, they lose 6-1 to LAG. You're like, wow, this team's good. You know, this game yeah. is debatably over because you know they're not going to win the control, and now they're going to win the final two, and then it goes in that final search, and then, yeah, they win yeah. 6-0, and you're like, how was the first one? Not only did, how did LAG lag even win the first one but how did they win it so dominantly like we smoked him in that final one so i'm glad it did give us a little bit of confidence uh i think it left a better taste in my mouth you know just to go out on such a high but yeah. again don't let the fact that it went on the high also distract you from the fact that this was almost a 3-1 lag um that hard point that second hard point was extremely close i know we won like i think 250 230 but there was a point in that game where lag was in control and i think toronto had a massive clutch break I forget the actual point itself, but I think if LAG holds that, like that's a potential, you know, three one victory for them. And and that's like a little bit concerning to be honest, because LAG I think is arguably the worst team in the game. And I, I it sounds a little harsh to say, and I mean, again, they're still a good team. There's still pieces on this team I really, really like. Like I do think they have the potential to turn it around, but somebody's gotta be the worst team in the game at any given point, right? And I, I think at this particular point. I don't think it's too hot of a of a take to suggest that they might be. And this game was really, really close, considering you're arguably playing, again, uh, one of, if not the worst team in the league right now. I think the team, again, showed inconsistencies. Cami and Kleenex uh, were pretty up and down throughout the series. I'd like to see them kind of reel it in a little bit more. You know, Kleenex sometimes needs to play his life better. I think he gets overzealous. Cami, I think, makes some some ego chows here and there. Um, I like Cami's yeah, aggression, at least. Uh, Bance, like, how... Do- on paper, Bance had one of the better games of the series. I've seen a lot of people be like, hey, he really turns it around. But, um, you know, I, I'd still like to see him put more map pressure. I know he likes to play that that route sort of style where he takes, like, weird routes and tries to flank them and, you know, shoot him in the back. Like, that's definitely how he plays. And, obviously, like, he puts a 1.14 KD, and that, like, looks really good on paper. But uh, it's a little bit weirder when you get in the fact that he has, like, 11 more kills than Kleenex, but only 12 more damage throughout the whole series. Um, I'd still like to see him put more pressure, but I, I, I think I agree with you that Insight was really like the star 
um, you know, person in, the, in this game for us. Again, obviously using that crate, which is such a powerful weapon, especially in the 60 hertz servers. You know, Kami comes in second with 14,000 damage, and, and Kleenex or Insight comes in first with 16.7. Right? Like that's yeah, that's 2,500 we'll more the... damage over to the second place person. Like Insight's clearly doing a lot for this team right now. Um, so it's a little bit concerning that we made that swap out for methods, right? You bring Insight in there, and Insight performs, but I don't know if the team has really gotten, you know, a, a lot better. Um, it's still early, it's still early days, so maybe they can turn it around, but. This was a win, but it was a little bit concerning to me that, that it maybe it wasn't, you know, a better of a, a stamp. Yeah, I think you hit all the talking points that I was going to talk about, too. It's one of the only wins we've had where Cam and Kleenex didn't completely shine. And you hit yeah. the nails on the head right there. Uh, you know, we see one of Ben's is technically better games, but still damage like to see that just a little, you know a little bit higher well yeah and this is kills he was finishing kills he was there for the trades and he he uh, flanked people like, but i feel like every time i looked at bands he was like again like he was shooting them in the back and i know that that's how he plays so like i was very clearly like an ultra strategy like but man i don't know like i don't know how the how well like it's one thing for that style to work and for you to put up a 1.14 when you're playing against a team like lag the worst team in the league but how's that like, how's that really going to work when you start playing these better teams you know what i mean like we're going to see but that's a bit of a concern. Like I know the style worked and we got the win, but I don't know how it's going to work when you're playing your New Yorks or your Phases or your, you know, your Dallases or, um, or Minnesotas. Minnesotas looking incredible. So I mean, we'll see. And this this next week is a really good indication, right? Like we gave Toronto their honeymoon period, quote unquote, right? We gave them a few matches. Insight they played LA, you know, they've they lost a phase, but that's fine. You lose the phase. They beat LAG. These next two games are going to be a really really good indication for I think what this team with these four truly is is this gonna work is it not going to work i think we're gonna find out in this next weekend yeah this is an absolutely crazy crazy catalyst i mean we're facing two teams that one's had a ma massive revamp and is, is looking London. pretty good and yeah. the other has some real polished players on them i mean yeah. nysl just to even start first off mac and clayster clayster literally one of the biggest mvp candidates of this year it's just had an amazing year he's having an amazing year right now his his damage you know per 10 and both control and hard point is literally i i think one of the highest uh, yeah the highest. i think in hard point he has the highest damage per 10 across the league yeah i, I think he's playing really like well 4700 that no wow. new york i agree new york's looking really good and, and, and look at like diamond con asim they have a good mix of old established talent and new blood to add some life into them. And they've been performing accordingly. No, and I agree. And London, I think, was going to be the sort of easy win for this team. Like, when people first looked at this group and thought that they were weaker than Group A, I think a lot of people said, okay, maybe LAG and London's are, are gimmies. But, dude, London's playing incredible COD as of recent, right? Like, Zed comes in there and, and really helps along a guy like Dylan. Like, this is finally the Dylan that, you know, I've heard so much about, right? Everyone keeps hyping up Dylan as this great SMG, and I, I hadn't really seen it until now. Um, and Dylan's looking great. Zed's looking great. Paul X is like, uh, has came in here off West from the amateur scene. It looks absolutely incredible. Like people are, are, are rightfully sort of hyping up Standy and I think Venom will figure it out too. Um, but Paul X has been looking insane. So shout out to him for really coming in there and making the most out of his opportunity. And I don't know if Shawnee's, you know, the best man in the world, but I, I've heard he's got really good comms. He's a good leader for that team. And, and London's no joke. Uh, right. I think Paul X tweeted, like, we're not, you know, he's he he's like, this isn't our record, our record's two and one, right? Like this is the team that we we have moving forward, and this is the way that you should look at a team. So um without gassing up these teams too much, I think this is gonna be a great opportunity to see how good is Toronto, right? Like NYSL is debatably a top five team. I think they are. Uh London probably isn't a top five team yet, but they're they're on the rise. So these are two games that I think are winnable for Toronto. Um, but these are also two games where I could see it you know, a three one or a three oh in the opposite direction. Um this, this is going to be a really good measuring stick for how good the Toronto Ultra are. And on top of that, to add even more pressure, I think if you want to get out of the winner winner's bracket, because you lost that round 11 map 5 to LA Thieves, you're probably going to have to win both of these games. So not only is it a good measuring stick to see how good is this team in this in this current four, but it's also a good measuring stick or a good opportunity to like get in that winner's bracket and secure those, those COD points that are so, so crucial. Because again, not every team makes champs this year. Only the top eight do. So like every point matters, man. This is... I, I don't know. Like, if you want my predictions, I I bias, like, drinking the Kool-Aid a little bit. I like to think that we beat London and probably lose to NYSL. But, man, I wouldn't be surprised if London comes out there and takes that 3-1 or 3-0. Or, or 
Um, so before I end my little rant here, I think there's sort of there's two there's two situations I, I want to talk about. Uh, Toronto goes out there and wins both these games. You know, that's great. Uh, you, you keep the team as it is. It, Toronto goes out there and you know maybe like loses one or even two, but they're really close, like a three two versus NYSL, a really competitive three two versus London. You know you maybe just stay the course. Um, but man, if this team goes out there and and they just get beat bad. Right, and you look, and they've lost to like an old LA Thieves team that's since made changes, and they get smoked by like NYSL, FaZe, and London, and then they squeak out a map five victory versus the LAG that easily could have been a three one for LAG against you know one of the worst teams in the league. Like this team really needs to start scouting some amateur talent and potentially thinking of bringing in another person because I don't know uh, if this is going to be able to cut it, assuming that they again get beat pretty handily by those two teams, which is not a guaranteed thing by any stretch of the imagination. These should be interesting. Yeah, wow. Holy crap, Spencer. You really, yeah, you, you hit the I'm nail done. on the head there. <laughs> Nothing else to add. Nah. Come on, Chris, give me something. <laughs> give me something. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I feel like there's, <clears throat> sometimes when I talk to people online, right, um, we talk about, like, things that they could fix with the current players we have. And a lot of people we talk to you say, hey, you know, you got to give them more time to you know, work out these kinks. You got to, you know, be able to, to do X, Y, Z. Um, I think that's two important things to note. I definitely understand what they mean when they talk about, Hey, need more time to help, you know, help people like Vance, not go out in a quarter or something like that <laughs> and look at one site line or something in some way like that. But can't forget that like this season's extremely fast. Mm -hmm. And also we've had a long off season to, or fairly long off season to, prep these things and these players have been playing for a while so um changes don't start being made at the start of a season they're made in the preseason leading up to the season as well as the season but so that's why i think that the place where we can make changes now lots of people are like let's wait so early on don't make changes so early on i think it's important to make changes early on because of that well you're running out of time and i think some of the best players that you could potentially bring in i think are gone um and yeah, the team just plays very individualistic. Like they play very slay heavy. You, I, I, it's been a complaint that we've you know said since the beginning of the season. They're a very slay heavy team. They play you know sort of these like one v one gunfights. They try to win, and when their slaying works and they're playing against LAG, it works. It looks good. Um, but when you play against these better teams and it doesn't, you know they can really struggle. So um, yeah, I'm not saying like hey, just come in there and build the team right now. Uh, again, well, like this weekend's gonna be a, a really big weekend, and I think we'll see a lot. But yeah, I was hoping Insight would fix that and help them play a little bit better as a team, and they've improved a little bit, but I don't know if it's enough. So uh, that's my closing thoughts. I, again, really, really important week. We'll see, and I, I'm excited. Yeah, I'm excited too. And hey, guys, if you like this, once again, you know, please let us know what your thoughts are. Type in a comment. We'll love to chat with you guys, and hit that like and subscribe button. It helps us out a lot. Chris, before we go, what's your predictions? We gotta give uh, we gotta give our predictions here. Oh yeah, of course. Um. NYSL, I think that's going to be a 3-1 for NYSL. Um, realistically, try not to be, I'm trying to be less biased here. Royal Ravens, I think we can pull it off of the 3-2. I actually have the exact same. I think 3-2 versus London and 3-1 versus NYSL. Um, yeah. A little bit optimistic, but within the realm of reason. So we will see. Thank you guys for watching. Um, always appreciate the support. Let us know what you think. You know, is Toronto going to win? Is Toronto not going to win? Uh, would you make changes? If so, who would you, you know, swap out and for who? Um, and as always, guys, Enjoy.